from New York with the final session of Congress before Election Day coming down to the wire. Now, Democrats are still torn between whether to force Republicans to vote now in defense of tax cuts for the rich or to duck a vote on extending the Bush tax cuts and let Republicans campaign against them for letting all taxes rise. If it seems like a no-brainer, our fifth story tonight should remove all doubt. A countdown special report, the reality behind the Republican argument made by House Republican leader John Boehner and others that tax cuts for the rich are simply tax cuts for small businesses whose owners report their business earnings on their individual personal income tax returns. House Democrats have pushed back that some of those supposedly small businesses are actually big businesses. And after the White House identified the right-wing billionaire Koch brothers as being among those ranks, Bill Kristol's right-wing magazine, The Weekly Standard, fired back, suggesting the White House had improperly looked at the Koch brothers' tax returns. In fact, their tax status was already public information. But as Countdown discovered, with the help of Pulitzer Prize winning tax reporter David K. Johnston, who joins us presently, the Koch brothers are just the tip of a half trillion dollar iceberg. A variety of sources, including court documents, confirm that when Republicans talk about the small businesses they're trying to help with their tax cut, they're actually talking about some of the biggest companies in the world and some of the richest people in this country. Mr. Boehner admitting this summer that his tax cuts only benefit 3% of so-called small businesses. So how small can that top 3% be when it accounts for half of all small business income? Only 3% of those small business people, you keep talking about all the small business people that are going to get taxed, only 3% uh, would, would be affected by that. Or, or, or do you quarrel with that figure? Is that a right figure or a wrong figure? Well, it may be 3%, but it's half of small business income uh, because uh, obviously the top 3% uh, have half of the, the gross income uh, for those companies that we would term small businesses. So how do they decide which companies they would term small businesses? H&R Block told Politico it has one and one half million small business clients, but extending the Bush tax cuts for the rich would benefit fewer than one half of one percent of them. According to the Joint Committee on Taxation, fewer than 750,000 people, one quarter of one percent of the country would be affected by the top rate. So how small can this top 3% of small businesses be if they make half the small business money? And, and, and let's remember the context back then. Dave Camp knows he is the ranking Republican member on the House Ways and Means Committee. To him, the definition of small business is a footnote. Literally, according to the Joint Committee on Taxation, 94% of all U.S. businesses in 2007 were S corporations, partnerships, or sole proprietorships, passed through business types commonly used by small businesses. They call them pass-through companies because they file no taxes, passing through profits to the owners who report them on their individual tax returns instead. In short, they are considered small, not because they have a small payroll, but because they have a small number of owners. It's not the income that's small. It's not the number of employees that's small. It's just the total number of owners that's small. In the case of S-Corps, up to 100 owners. My colleagues and I have been listening. When politicians talk about small businesses, they are including any company that pays taxes as a pass-through. House Democrats last week identified three limited partnerships that file as pass-throughs. A pipeline company called Enterprise, the Wall Street firm Kohlberg, Kravis & Roberts, and the accounting firm Price Waterhouse Coopers. The Koch brothers' own website lists partnership after partnership after partnership that make up a small business empire of 70,000 employees. According to the Washington Post, more than one million people who reported at least 200,000 in income in 2008 were partnerships and S-corps. The richer you are, the more likely you are to call yourself a small business that way. 89% of Americans who make more than 10 million a year filed as a partnership or as an S-corp. In 2008, more than half a million of these supposed small businesses had more than a million in assets. In 2005, almost 20,000 of them had annual receipts of more than $50 million.
But if you want to know which companies these are, you are out of luck because individual tax filings are not public record. Still, some have revealed themselves. The S Corp Association lobbying group is chaired by an executive of the Hillman Company, a small business founded by a billionaire. The S Corp Group president is from Venn Strategies, a small business whose chief operating officer is a former special assistant to President Bush, whose president used to work for Senate Leader Reid. Directors of the S Corp Group come from Farrell Gas, which provides propane and propane accessories with a small business touch to one million customers a small business. Coors Tech, North America's largest maker of technical ceramics, a small business founded by Adolf Coors, a small business. The Dead River Company, a small business with 1,200 employees, half a billion in annual revenue, and commercial real estate valued at $300 million, a small business. And a small business called McElhaney. The McElhaney family selling their Tabasco brand pepper sauce out of their kitchen to 160 countries. A small business. The Boston Globe revealed in 2007 that Fidelity Investments was becoming an S-Corp, a move that saved this small business hundreds of millions of dollars. Similar to how a scrappy little newspaper called the Tribune, as in the Chicago Tribune, made an extra $1.9 billion by converting to S-Corp status in 2008. As tax reporter David K. Johnston figured out, other companies get revealed as S-Corps when their filings become evidence in tax trials. That's how he identified one of the biggest small businesses in the world. Bechtel, a small business that builds airports, seaports, railroads, oil refineries, nuclear power plants. But back when it was just ye old Bechtel shoppy, they built the Hoover Dam. And today, 49,000 employees, $31 billion in revenue, the world's number one engineering and construction firm, a small business. Companies aside, who are the actual people who would benefit from the Republican tax cut for the richest small businesses? Him, for one. Bloomberg News reports the president and other big authors and actors and celebrities, even hedge fund managers, file as S-Corps to save on taxes. Nor is Mr. Obama the only famous S-Corp owner. Recognize this guy? How about now? Thanks to court documents reviewed by Countdown, we know one of Texas's two richest men in the 1990s became an S-Corp back in 1991. Senator John McCain knows about S-Corps. Small businesses are the job generator of America. Mrs. John McCain filed as an S-Corp back in 2006, a small business owner who owns a massive beer distributorship and reported income of more than $6 million. And then there's small businessman Philip Anschutz, a small businessman who gave 30000 to the Senate Republican Campaign Committee last year and 15000 to the House, on top of his family's more than half a million to Republicans overall. Mr. Anschutz owns at least a part of more than 100 small businesses, small railroads, small oil companies, small sports stadiums, small arenas, a small national movie theater chain, a small half of small major league small soccer, the LA Kings, the LA Lakers. His small business entertainment company likes to clean out the old garage now and again to put on small shows by Bette Midler and Shit.